live. Welcome to Learn with the Expert. We're so excited to have everyone here with us today. As we're waiting for everyone to come on in and join, we would love for you to introduce yourself in the chat. So open up the chat. If you don't see the chat button, you should see chat in the right hand corner. Open that up and share your role, um, where you're from. If you are um, still in the classroom, your grade level, if that's applicable, please make sure to select everyone. Um, when select the drop down arrow and select everyone from the menu in the chat so that everyone can see your responses. Welcome, everybody. So today you will meet a world class expert who will share actionable ways to support teachers social and emotional needs through planning professional development and trauma informed self care tools. Hello, Allison from Scotland. Welcome. Hello, Michelle. Welcome, welcome. Hello, Joe. Welcome from the Philippines. Great to have you. Hi, Pat. Well, welcome, everybody. So before we begin, we do have a few housekeeping items that we want to make sure that you are aware of. If you have any questions during this session that you would like our expert, Dr. Martinez, to answer, please click on the Q&A tab and ask them there. This just ensures that we will not miss any of the questions. If there are any questions that go unanswered, we will definitely reach out to you and answer them um, directly after the webinar. All other comments, thoughts, ideas, feelings can be put in the chat tab so that um, everyone who's joining us today can view. Um, just make sure that your chat and your Q&A tabs are open. If not, make sure you click on the little chat icon in the lower right hand corner. Um, you will have the option to toggle between the chat, the Q&A, and you'll also see a handout tab. The handouts tab will include key takeaways from our session today. Um, also, this session is being recorded and a link to the recording as well as the handout that we will share today will be shared in a follow up email in about 24 to 48 hours after the session is complete. All right. Welcome, everybody. Wayne. Hello, Johnny. Welcome, everybody that is joining us. So now that we have an idea of who you are, let's meet our team. I am Mia. I am the training and professional development specialist here at Seesaw. Uh, so I facilitate professional de development. I work with teachers and administrators like yourself on how to implement Seesaw in your schools, in your districts, and with your teachers. I am based in Chicago, Chi-Town. Um, and I, before joining Seesaw full-time, I did teach kindergarten in the Chicago public school system for 10 years, but now I get to work with amazing educators and leaders like yourself um, on, in Seesaw. So I am so happy to be here with you today. So now that you know who I am, let's go ahead and meet our expert. So today we are joined by Dr. Lorea Martinez. This is the second time she is joining us. She, she's so good that we had to just come <laughs> back. She is an award-winning founder of Heart and Mind Consulting, which is a company that's dedicated to helping schools and organizations integrate social emotional learning into their practices, products, and learning communities. As an educator who has worked with both children and adults internationally, Dr. Martinez is a faculty member at Columbia University's Teachers College, educating aspiring, uh, aspiring principals in emotional intelligence. Um, and we do have a surprise for you. We will be giving away three registrations for Dr. Martinez's most recent course, Growing Your Heart mm -hmm. Skills. So make sure that you don't go anywhere, you stay tuned. Her um, book for educators, Teaching with the Heart and Mind, is currently available. Previously, she was a special education teacher and administrator. She frequently, frequently blogs about how to incorporate SEL into teaching practices and parenting on her website, loreamartinez.com, which we'll drop a link to in the chat. Whoa, that was a mouthful. She is so accomplished. 
Welcome, <laughs> Dr. Lorea. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you, Mia. It is such a pleasure to be back. I love CISO and I, I like to tell the story that CISO saved my life when we went into a lockdown and I had a preschool child and a, a, a child who was starting kindergarten uh, in distance learning. And the CISO was the platform the school was using for distance learning and really everything that my child was able to accomplish through this platform was amazing. So I'm so happy to be able to contribute in this way. And today to talk about the topic of educator well-being, I've been in the field of social emotional learning for almost 10 years now. And I have to say that when I first started this work, I thought that I was going to be really focused on supporting schools to teach and, and integrate these skills. And as I was doing this work, I realized that we cannot do any good teaching unless we have a workforce, that we have educators that are really modeling these skills and that they have their own awareness of how they are they are using and modeling these skills in, in their classroom. So I'm excited to be with all of you this morning and to be talking about a topic that is dear to my heart. So I'm hoping that it will be insightful and, and that it will provide you some tools so you can go back to your, your school buildings and, and do something with this information. Well, thank you again for being here, Dr. Martinez, and you're absolutely right. Setting a strong foundation for a great year um, begins with teachers, and that's really how you create a healthy school community, which you'll get more into um, in a bit. Um, the challenge of the past two years um, have really taken a toll on many educators' mental health. Stress is the most common reason teachers cite for leaving the profession. Um, when experienced for an extended period of of time, as unfortunately many educators have, stress impacts their ability to achieve their best work and really can worsen burnout. So in this session, Dr. Martinez will examine ex actionable ways to support teachers' social and emotional needs through planning, professional development, and trauma-informed self-care tools. So without further ado, here is Dr. Martinez to teach you all about these actionable items. All right. So first, we couldn't start, um, sorry, uh, without just taking a moment to arrive in this webinar, right? Probably you are, have been um, doing, depending on your time zone, maybe this is the end of the day for you. I saw there we have some uh, friends in the, in watching us today that are coming from other, pla other places in the world. So just take a moment to arrive and um, and just put in the chat, what is something positive that happened today? Maybe a situation or uh, even something that you did that made you feel good with yourself or with your work. So hop to the chat and just um, briefly tell us what is something positive that happened for you today? So we'll take just a, a few seconds there to maybe bring up a couple of responses um, from you. So I see Emily says, I had a successful tech lesson with kindergarten students. Congratulations, Emily. Um, Tara say, says, I was able to connect with a student with a potential internship. Someone was able to leave their classroom and go go say hi to students and, and teachers during recess, help a student that was upset, connect with students. Someone had a successful CISO training with new teachers. How wonderful. So just um, as a moment when we are doing this kind of work in our schools and recognizing the challenge and the difficulty that it is to, to be in education today with all the challenges we have had uh, during the pandemic, it's important to have this um, attitude to bring into 
our awareness, what is something positive that happens? And there are many things that happen during the day and some are difficult, but also we have uh, those positive things. So how in, in a very short period of time, we can, fill the, we can fill the chat with things, positive things that happen in our day. So thank you for sharing that. And please feel free to continue to type in those things as, as we move forward. So just has to put a little bit of a context of what is the experience that we are having? What is the moment that we, we are dealing with uh, today? Sometimes I talk about the fact that we are experiencing multiple pandemics. And the reason is because we know how much distance learning and all the changes that we had to deal with has impacted uh, kids' mental health. And it has been, um, here you have some data, but we, we know that students have experienced higher levels of grief, of anxiety, of depression. We see visits to the emergency room for suspected suicide have jumped to 31%. Um, this is data from 2020. Uh, we have more than 140,000 children in, in the U.S. where I am um, of, of children that have lost a primary or secondary caregiver. So they are grieving that loss. And we have seen a lot of increase in, in anxiety, students that are going back to class. And now the mandates uh, here in the U.S., we just started um, the new school year and mask mandates have changed, the school protocols have changed. So all those aspects create more anxiety for our students. And when it comes to our high school students and, and our female students, we have, they are reporting feelings of sadness and hopelessness, and that has increased 40% from 2009. So probably this is um, this is not news for you, but it's important to recognize what is the teachers have to face in this, in this current situation that we have. And this is very recent data uh, from the National Center for Education Statistics in July 2022. Um, they shared this data and we see that more than 80% of U.S. public schools report, report that the pandemic has negatively impacted student behavior and their social emotional development. So again, within the context of this webinar where we are discussing how do we create healthy school communities through teacher well-being, we cannot have that conversation without acknowledging how the work of the educator has changed because of this, the negative impact that um, the pandemic has had on our students and all of those things that we were reviewing in terms of the, the data that shows the mental health of students being impacted, what we see is that that translates into a different behavior from students. So as you probably know, behavior is communication. So students, and probably you experience this in your own schools or you have seen your educators come to you. If you're a, an administrator, complain about student behavior. And the reason is because they are dealing with all those social emotional issues um, due to the pandemic, to the impact on mental health. And that is being that the way that our students communicate with us is through their behavior. So we have to recognize that reality and, and also recognize that COVID has also impacted our teachers' mental health. So teachers in their profession, they have to not only address their students' needs, but the working conditions and the way that we have responded as a, in, a, in a way as a global society to the pandemic has also impacted the well-being of our educators. And if you are in the U.S., you know that we have a, a, almost like an exodus uh, from the teaching profession because teachers have found like it is so hard to stay in a, in a job that they love, that they care about, but they have said that we can't do this anymore. So we have seen a lot of teachers live in the profession, um, even teachers that were not thinking about uh, leaving teaching. They, they have decided to maybe retire early or just leave the profession altogether because 
of the working conditions and the amount of stress that they had to um, to deal with. So in this situation, it we we the question is, what do we do, right? And that's what I'm, I'm hoping that I will give you some guidance on what to do um, in your own setting. But before, I want to give you an opportunity to share uh, with us. What are some of the, the current challenges that you are finding in your own context in order to support um, educator well-being? So I'm going to drop a link here in the chat. Um, and this is for a, a, a Jamboard. And if you can uh, just quickly um, jump to that Jamboard and just share maybe like one or two uh, challenges that you are um, experiencing. So we'll give you um, a minute or so to to just share one challenge. And me, I don't know if it's possible to share that uh, screen so we can look at it and then go back to the PowerPoint. Yes, let me go ahead and. Perfect. Thank you. Um, yeah. So some some uh, some of you have shared understaffed. That is such a big issue. I know in my own children's school, they are when someone is sick or needs to go somewhere. Um, we are still looking for a fifth grade teacher, right? So the reality of not having enough teachers to do this work is a is a a real challenge. How can we support the needs of our students if we don't have enough personnel in order to do this work? Teachers are afraid to seek help, right? So what is happening with our teachers if they are afraid of um, speaking out or saying this is very difficult? What is the, the culture that we create in our schools if teachers are, are afraid of asking for help? We see the teachers are being asked to do too much, not enough resources, absolutely, for first-year teachers that they are trying to navigate so much. Being a first-year teacher is, diff is difficult enough in, in regular conditions, in, normal, in the normal situation. So being able to do this under these circumstances of we, we, we are going into year three of our pandemic and some of the challenges are still there. Um, trying to close huge learning gaps, not only the, the learning, the academics, sometimes we feel that pressure, right, but also the social emotional component. Um, low students, fear of not meeting all the learners' needs, right? Teachers have really high expectations about how they support their students, so not being able to reach them in combination with being understaffed that can create additional stress for teachers, absolutely. So thank you for sharing that because that gives us really good data about like this is this is a topic that we need to be talking about because these challenges are real. Um, so thank you, Mia, for sharing that that data. And now you, we can go back to our uh, PowerPoint. And these will be available. So if you want to take a look later on, uh, we'll make sure that we share a, a, a screenshot, an image of all the the challenges that you share with us. Perfect. All right. So in order to kind of respond to the situation, to this moment, um, and, and be able to support effectively our teachers, I believe that we have to do it through social emotional learning. The need to support our educators couldn't be any greater than in this moment when we see the teachers are leaving the profession because it is so hard to, to be teaching today. And one of the things that I talk about in my book, Teaching with the Heart in Mind, is the fact that we need to do this work in a systemic and systematic way. And taking care of educator well-being and being able to support their social emotional capacity 
to help them develop those tools, those strategies in order to more effectively and efficiently deal with the stress of, of the moment and, and, and the challenges of teaching needs to be done through SEL initiatives. And the reason why I say this is because we cannot look at these um, these problem that we have and say, oh, we need, we, we're going to do something that is going to be patchwork or it's going to, we're just going to put the bandaid in this moment. Like we need to think about the, this as a systematic problem, as a systemic problem that is impacting the well-being of our educators. So anything that, that as you are reflecting, as we are uh, going to be engaging with different ideas as you are reflecting on what this means for your own context. I want to engage you in thinking about the system, not only what are the individual skills that teachers have, but also to think about what are the roadblocks that are making hard for teachers to do their work and be able to do it well. And in any SEL initiative, if at your school, this is something that you do, we have to think about it from a whole school implementation perspective. And from the classroom, we need adults to have that social emotional capacity. And from the school, we need to be looking at what are the structures, what are the routines that support not only student well-being, our, our, as it is our, our greatest hope and, and objective to support our students, but we cannot do that unless we support our adults. And as you know, the research has shown that when we have adults and educators um, that have that social emotional capacity, that has a direct, uh, a positive correlation with the learning environment. So when we are supporting our teachers, we are also making sure that the learning environment, um, that we are supporting the creation of a positive learning environment. Because if we have, as you know, stressed teachers in the classroom, emotions are contagious. So when teachers are stressed, our students are going to, perceive that tension, they're going to perceive that stress, and they're going to they're gonna, um, feel and experience that from their teachers. So we have to look at not only how we support the teacher as a whole, but also it is in our best interest to support educators because they are so critical. They, they play such an important role in creating that positive environment in the classroom. Um, so when it comes to strategies, I want to share five things that you can do to develop educator well-being. And I, I just want to put it kind of like warn you that some of them are you're going to be like, wow, this is pretty common sense. But you would be surprised as I'm working with schools and, and school leadership teams, supporting them with SCL implementation, how much of this is sometimes taking to for granted or we don't think about like why is that important so the first strategy that i want to share with you is and this is very simple is like we need to ask teachers what do you need and i can tell you that sometimes leadership is hesitant to ask this question because in a way they are afraid of what the answer is going to be or maybe they are concerned that they won't know what to do with that information. But we cannot support our teachers in effective ways unless we know what is it that they need from, from a social and emotional perspective, right? So that's a very important first step is understanding what do teachers at your school need in order to feel supported, to feel safe, to feel like they, the administrators are hearing them. Um, and of course, collecting the data is, is a first step. Um, and then we need to do something about it, right? Like one of the things that, that I believe creates more frustration for teachers is when they are given a survey or they're giving um, a, a questionnaire to answer, but then nothing is done with the data. There's no a cycle where there is a response. Uh, the, the administrators don't go back and say, oh, this is what the data said. And these are the things that we're going to do about it. Um, and here I have a, a resource that you can use. This is a free download from um, the Center on Great Teachers and Leaders. 
Um, it, they have a survey called Educator Resilience and Trauma-Informed Self-Care. And it's a, something that you can download and use. And maybe you, you might adapt it to your own context. But it's important to start with that piece of identifying needs and really understanding what is that your teachers, um, what are those roadblocks that are really getting on the way of teachers doing their work well. The second aspect is um, removing barriers. So using data uh, to the data that we collected in, in number one, and apologies here, I think that there's a, there's a, a missing resource here. Um, removing barriers means that when we have collected that data, we use that to look at what are the school structures, what are the routines, and what are the expectations with the goal of making sure the teachers are able to focus on the things that they do well, and that is teaching. Um, I have heard so many educators say, you know, I, the, the challenges and the bureaucracy, the things that I have to do. Uh, take away so much time from me to really focus on teaching, on connecting with students, on creating that safe and supportive learning environment that we know is needed. So think about like that, that idea of removing barriers and what you can do in order to, to do this effectively, right? Again, like we are using the data to identify what are the students, what are the teachers needs. And then we are thinking, okay, what are the roadblocks and what are the things that get on the way? And as a, if you're a teacher, if you're an administrator, there are certain things that you, they will be outside of your control. If you have a district mandate, if you have a state mandate, um, there are certain things that you won't be able to do anything about. But I think that creating that awareness that there are certain things you won't be able to do anything about, but there are other things um, that you do have control as an administrator. So focusing on those that you have uh, control is going to be important. And to to ask yourself, well, maybe sometimes we, we fall into the, the trap of continuing to do things the same way, the, the way that we used to do them. And this might be a moment to be more innovative and say, well, maybe there is a better way to structure our schedule or to make sure that we give teachers an extra prep um, if, and, and work the schedule to make that possible. So there are so many things in terms of like really looking with the lens of like, how can I remove barriers for teachers to do their work? Um, then the third aspect, which I think is so important and it really connects with all the work that I do with social emotional learning is to focus on strength and relationship. So imagine like if you are in an environment where uh, staff, um, there is no trust in, in, in among your educators, where there is no space, no time for teachers to come together and, and, and really strengthen their relationships. Um, that's going to create a tension, it's going to create an environment where we are not working together uh, towards a shared purpose. So as a community, as a learning community, it's important to do things and, and make decisions that are with the goal of strengthening those relationships. So in, in the way that you run your staff meetings, in how as a leader you are connecting with your teachers, it is important to, to plan and organize your, the, the school life in a way to make sure that we, we have that goal of strengthen those relationships among teachers. And that means that you are planning to have that space and that time for people to come together and also for to engage them in that problem solving process. Again, you know, once once you overcome the fear of collecting the data, then you can be ready to engage educators and say, OK, how can we do this better in order to build a healthier school community, not only for students, but also for educators? And 
it is important to, and again, this is almost common sense, right? If we have a community that where educators don't have those positive relationships, how can we support their well-being, right? But it is different to think about, like, I'm going to plan with the goal of strengthening those relationships. I think that that's the differentiator when you are acknowledging that your goal may be for, for a meeting um, it is to create that space where teachers can come together and really talk about the real issues, the real struggle, and do what you know and engage them in that problem solving. So they are co-creators of those solutions that you are trying to bring uh, to your to your educators. Um, the fourth aspect is being able to support adult SEL development. And this is an aspect where the, you see sometimes where there are certain activities that are being done, I would say, to teachers, but not with teachers, where maybe they are being forced to do some, some mindfulness or they are being engaged in activities that might have, they might have a good intent, but it's not being done in a developmentally appropriate or respectful way. So notice here that on the slide I have that it has to be done respectfully. And sometimes we are um, engaging teachers in activities that although our intent might be positive, it doesn't respect that adults have their own process. And I, I can tell you that I've seen so many times how when schools are trying to develop that the social emotional skills of educators they just take the work that they do with students and they say oh this is the same than we do for the students so we're just going to do it for the teachers but the reality is that as adults we need a different way of engaging uh, with this kind of work we need activities that are developmentally appropriate that are um, adult that take into consideration how adults develop these skills. So although this is important, I, I do want to put that, um, that, that note there that as you are thinking about how can I do this social emotional work with my teachers that it needs to be done and it needs to be really thoughtful because one of the, the um, the EQ, the lessons on emotional intelligence, kind of like one of the basic lessons is that when, pe when people feel pushed, they resist. So if you are doing this work and kind of like forcing teachers to engage in self-care, right? But we are not looking at what are those barriers, like we, we, we looked at in, in the first strategy and the second strategy, if you're not looking at the conditions that make that job or that um, they're the teaching itself so hard, we're not looking at that before we do this social emotional work, it's going to backfire because that it's not going to be done authentically, right? And there is a part of this work where we need to support educators to develop these skills. I'm a big believer in the importance of adult SEL skills because when we engage in this process, what we do is offer and provide more resources, more tools and strategies for educators to be able to um, be more resilient, to deal with the stress in more effective ways. But at the same time, it cannot be an individual effort on its own. You have to combine that, that systemic, the school-wide perspective and, and collecting that data and removing those barriers so then you can really support the adult SEL development. Um, and this is a place where many uh, administrators um, feel uncomfortable because they wonder, like, how do I... Um, develop the adult social emotional skills of my staff and this is one of the reasons that brought me to create this online course um, it's called growing your hard skills because I saw there was such a big gap in 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 the resources that were made available to schools where administrators they knew they had to develop the educator SEL skills, but maybe they didn't, they didn't feel comfortable engaging in this work. Or sometimes the trust level at the, at, at the, edu the, the trust level within 
educators within the staff is not high enough where you would feel comfortable sharing about your feelings or sharing about your struggle. So this is a, a course that I've created. It has seven modules. And just to, to give you a teaser here, so HEART in, in the HEART in Mind model is an acronym that stands for five essential social emotional skills. So the course goes through these five skills and it provides tools for educators to develop those skills. Um, it has a self-assessment so teachers really know okay, I'm starting this course and what are the skills that I need to develop? So the self-assessment gives you exactly, this is a place where I need to focus, maybe it's empathy, maybe it's more on the self-management side. And once you have uh, completed the course, you have an opportunity to take that self-assessment again um, and see what, what, how that growth happened. And I would be very happy to talk to you more about the course and how you can implement it. If this is something you want to uh, bring to your school, uh, there are schools that are using it um, and they're engaging teachers and someone at the school is facilitating. So they are creating a community of practice where maybe um, teachers are engaging in a couple of modules before that community of practice meeting. Then they talk about it at school. Then they do a little more work on their own. They uh, come together again and they are doing this work over the course of a school year. Um, and there are also some opportunities to do coaching with me. So I know um, CISA put the link in the chat and take a look and, and please reach out because I'm really excited about offering this, this resource to school as a way um, for schools to be able to engage with that work of developing the capacity of our teachers in, as I was saying, in developmentally appropriate ways and respectful ways. And then uh, we come to the, the last strategy. And this is um, kind of like looking for if you're an administrator or if you're a, a coach or um, you work with adults in this capacity, or maybe if you are here because you want to um, hear the strategies and then bring them back to your leadership team, there is an important component about examining how we lead, how as leaders of this work, how are we creating those emotional connections with those teachers that we are trying to lead? And this is a lot of the work that I do with my students at Teachers College, where we look at, you know, what is the emotional intelligence of um, leaders, right? And, and using these skills that you are trying to build and create that healthy school community is important as you are reflecting on this work. Uh, to think about, you know, that sometimes I say, what do you bring to the party? Do you bring donuts or do you bring cactus? Um, and, and that means that reflecting on how are your interactions with the teachers. And of course, as, as administrators, you always, there is a part of accountability that you can uh, escape, right? That is part of the job, but you can have that accountability also with compassion, with care, with, a, with an honest, um, approach that that is another human being and sometimes when we see people struggle and we feel overwhelmed it's hard to approach them to really understand what is it that they are going through um but that creating that emotional connection is gonna make us be able to support our educators so much more um effectively and and really to touch on the things that are being that are being hard for them. And those may be different by individuals. It may be um, shared by the community, but really creating that emotional connection is gonna be very important. Um, we can't do anything without trust, right? Like we, you can ask teachers to teach a new curriculum, but if there's no trust, right? Like the environment that it creates is very different. So thinking about like, what is the trust level? And then if there's no trust, which, you know, might be something difficult to acknowledge, but to say, what 
how would my leadership change if my only goal was to build trust among my school community, right? That would mean that as a leader, your focus, your time, the way that you would prioritize how you are investing your resources and your time would be different. But as, as we know from, from research, creating those emotional connections and creating that trust is such an important part of really creating high-performing teams, right? Just from the perspective of organizational development, those are components that are very important. And they start with the leader, right? They start with the administrator. And again, you don't need to have a role in order to be a leader. Maybe you are the one who's trying to uh, cheer up teachers. Maybe you are the one who has a little more space um, to do this work and you are supporting teachers. So if that's you, you don't need to have a role that can be, you know, I'm talking about, about you and, and your influence as well. Um, and then there is the part around how leaders engage their own social, emotional and cultural competence we live in a moment where we have to pay attention to, to what is our cultural competence, how we are responding uh, to the needs. If we work in diverse communities, if we work with communities of color, uh, not only in our student force, but also in our um, educator workforce, we need to pay attention as leaders, like how are we engaging and modeling uh, those skills. As you know, it is very, sometimes I say for teachers, we cannot uh, teach what we don't practice when it comes to social emotional skills. But for leaders, it applies as well, because it's, if you are trying for educators to have tools to deal with their stress more effectively, or to um, you know, to be honest with their emotions, we as leaders, the, the work starts with you. Right? It, it has, you have to do that inward process first before you can uh, look out into the community and ask teachers to do the same work. Um, so those are the, the five strategies that I brought for you today. And I, I have a handout that I know CISO is going to share for you where you have them. Um, I actually think that we had the, I think I saw the handout, right, Mia? when I was uh, sharing the slides. I know yes. I started at the beginning. I don't know if I... We have linked the, uh, the handout in the chat. Um, oh, perfect. And we will also be sharing that in the follow-up email. Um, and it is also in the handouts tab as well. Okay, awesome. This is this is an awesome platform. First time I'm using it, but I'm, I'm loving it how everything is right there. Um, so just to close before we move into questions, just want to... Uh, you know, leave you with this thought that the same way that we talk about students um, having that need to feel seen and, and, and feel supported and safe when they are in school, I, I, I wholeheartedly believe that the same is true for educators. When our educators feel, they feel safe in our buildings, they feel supported, they feel seen, someone is hearing their concerns and their those obstacles, and someone is there that has their back, I think that is the way that we can keep teachers in the profession. And I think it starts, as I was saying, with how leaders are leading this work to do it in authentic ways, to ask teachers what is it that they need, and then to work as a community to solve those problems, because this is not an, an, a one individual problem, right? This is something that um, we need to be able to address as a, as a community that is concerned for the mental health of everybody, right? Not only students, but also our educators. So um, yeah, so the next slide just has my contact information. Um, my website that has a ton of information. As Mia was saying, I've been blogging about SCL for many years. So you can, um, if you are interested in, in SCL as a, as a whole, you'll find many resources there. And I'm on social media, Twitter and Facebook. And uh, particularly if you're excited about that course, I would really love to talk to you about ways to bring it to your school. So uh, drop me an email, let me know, and I'm happy to chat. Thank you so much, Dr. Martinez. 
Um, thank you so much again for sharing all of this wealth of knowledge. There are so many gems that you dropped. I love um, what you said about emotions being contagious and that when we are supporting teachers, in turn, we are supporting our students as well. And that idea um, as leaders of really paying attention to how we engage and how we lead and modeling um, those skills so um, that we can create that positive school culture as well. Yeah. All right. So um, we are going to, oops, we do have the handout. Sorry, I went back to your slides. I can't seem to uh, click back over to mine, but we do have the handout once again that we dropped in the chat. Um, and also that is linked in the handout tab and that will be shared as well in the follow-up email. So um, look for that and take a look. And that handout does contain those strategies that Dr. Uh, Martinez talked about um, and um, a planning space for you to kind of reflect and plan some next steps in order to develop that teacher well-being. So now we are going to open it up for questions. So if you have any questions, make sure you put those in the Q&A. So here is one. Hi, I'm on the Center of Great Teachers and Leaders website, but can't find the survey. Could you let us know where it is in the website and where we can find it? Sure. Yeah, I'll, I'm happy to share that link um, with the CISOP folks, and then they can send it out in the follow-up email. Great. Thank you. We'll make sure that we get that in that email. Let's see what other questions we have. Okay. I understand everyone will work through the modules at a different pace, but can you advise um, an approximate time that the course would take to complete? Yeah. So more or less the, uh, the approximation is that each module would take two to three hours to complete, but most of the work is not... Um, in the platform. So there's each module has, I would say, as a maximum 30 minutes of watch time. Um, so that's where you get kind of the content. But most of the time is going to be spent practicing the tools in the module. So this, you know, a part of this work is to build awareness. But once we have that awareness, we have to go kind of out into the world and practice. Um, so that's where teachers would spend most of the time thinking about like, how we manage our emotions. For example, there's a five step process. So you would go in and you would try that process and then go back into the learning platform and uh, type in like some of the things that you found out some of your, your insights. So I would say two to three hours, uh, but from the content perspective, I would say 30 minutes and the rest of the time you are just practicing the tools. Great. Thank you. Do you have any resources for supporting adults with their social emotional learning? Yeah. So the course is, as I, I shared, is one of the, the main resources and one that I'm, I'm really excited to share with communities now. And I think that just to give you another example, I think even if you think about how you are running staff meetings, for example, many times what in, in my, and I'm, I'm a former teacher, so I've experienced this as on the teacher side as well, where people come together for staff meetings and most of the times they spend sharing information that could be shared in an email or a handout, right? And there's no time to build that sense of community. So I feel like any opportunity where adults are coming together, it's a great place for um, for the leader to organize a meeting where you are actually purposefully just creating connections and having people interact with each other, sharing about their their celebrate celebrating the accomplishments and also sharing those struggles, but really planning those sp adult spaces in a way that are it, it's a lot more relationship driven. Great, thank you. Do you mind sharing your contact information one more time about, and the information about the course? Sure. Yeah. So you can contact me at um, www.loreamartinez.com. Uh, and you, you will find on my website, there's a contact tab and you can send me a note there that goes, goes directly to my inbox. Great. We will drop that again in the chat and we will put your website information in the uh, follow up email as well. Let's see if there are any more questions. 
Will there be a replay? Um, we are recording this session, so we will be sharing the link to the recording in that follow-up email, along with the handout and with Dr. Larea's contact information um, that we've, and all the strategies we've gone up today in about 24 to 48 hours. So yes, you will receive that. All right. Does look like we have gotten through all of the questions in the chat. Thank you so much for those um, amazing questions that you shared. Um, before you do uh, leave today, we do have a goal that we want you to set for yourself. We encourage you to take a closer look um, at at least one of the strategies that Dr. Martinez has shared today. Um, she shared so many amazing strategies and determine what your next steps will be um, that you will take to begin developing your uh, educator's well-being. And also we welcome your feedback. Um, so we wanna thank Dr. Martinez for helping us understand the importance of really creating that healthy school community. Um, we will be giving away three free registrations to her course, Growing Your Heart Skills. Um, so make sure that you complete the Google form that we are dropping in the chat um, to not only give us your feedback so that we can continue to make these sessions um, cater these sessions to meet your needs, but also so that you can um, win a free registration for Dr. Martinez um, for her course. And we'll reach out directly to the winners following this session. So if you would like to learn um, more about Seesaw and how um, you and your teachers can use Seesaw um, in your schools and in your classrooms, please visit our new learning hub and you can access that learning hub at learn.seesaw.me. We will drop the link to the learning hub in the chat as well. And I just want to say thank you again, Dr. Martinez, for sharing all of your amazing knowledge with us on how to support uh, teachers' uh, social emotional well being. Um, it's really critical that we do focus on that, um, especially right now. Um, so thank you again. And thank you, everyone who joined us today. And we hope to see you again soon here at Seesaw. Thank you, everybody. <laughs>